Would you like to draw beautiful, realistic portraits of family and friends from your own photographs? Well, today we're going to take a look at how that process is done. The easiest way to get a great reference photo for one of your portrait drawings is simply, first of all, decide what it is that you want to say about this person, and then when you work with your model, place them next to a window so that the light wraps softly around their face. This will give you the range of values and the kind of information that you as an artist needs in order to create a successful drawing. Establish the most flattering angle for your model and then just work the picture until you come up with one that you're happy with. Decide what size you want your drawing and then go to either a photo kiosk or a copy center and get a black and white print done that you can use as your reference image. In this instance, we're going to be using what's called the sight size measuring technique. Using a measuring tool like a knitting needle or kitchen skewer, we simply transfer the measurement that we see on our reference image over to the paper next to it. We start with the large peripheral boundary lines, establish a few landmarks, and then begin to work up the individual features of the drawing, always looking at proportions, angles, and shapes. We work from the larger to smaller shapes and begin to develop details in a very linear and graphic style. Our objective is simplicity and accuracy. We also separate our light and our dark shadow shapes. Once we've established our initial rough drawing, we then go back in and clean it up looking for absolute accuracy in what's called articulating and the final drawing that we create is called a construct. This image acts as a blueprint and a foundation in which to build the finished drawing on. Once we finish our construct, we're going to transfer this image over to our good working paper. It's a good idea to make a photocopy of the drawing so that you can then reinforce the lines and make them darker so it's easier to see what you're doing. Then using a series of drawing pencils, replicate the construct on your good drawing paper and begin by shading in all of your shadow shapes with about a 40% value with a flat, even tone. This is called an initial lay-in. The next step is to prepare our edges for the soft transitions that are going to create the form or the sense of three-dimensionality in our image. We move around our shadow shapes looking at the quality of the edges and transitions that are in each of our shapes and we replicate the softness or the hardness of those edges in order to prepare us to go to the next stage. This is called edge preparation. Before we move any further, it's a good idea to establish a full range of values. Put in our darkest darks and our lightest lights so that we can orient ourselves in terms of the different shades of grey that we're going to be using in order to build up the rest of the drawing. From there, we move into what's called big form modeling. And this is to create an overall sense of volume to the entire head. And this lays a foundation for the rest of the drawing to be built on. And it eliminates any sense of patchiness or a lack of cohesion in the drawing. It also eliminates the work looking photographic. Everything that we've done up until this point are actually foundational layers that we work on before we get into a lot of the finished drawing. And all of these foundational stages are the aspects of creating a highly finished drawing that most people are not even aware of. Now we're ready to get in there and start developing the finishing details. And this is where everybody wants to go right off the bat. But without all the foundational work, the image has a tendency to look patchy, flat, and photographic. I start with the eyes and work from the center out of the image. And what I'm looking for are shapes, values, and the quality of the transitions and edges. Notice, for instance, the small bird-like shape that's in the corner of the eye. These are the sorts of things that I'm looking for. There's also a small rectangular shape under the bottom lid on the outside of the eye. I'm looking for the shape and I'm looking for the value. Once I've established that, then I'm looking for the transitions. How did it blend with the area that's next to it? I'm working with a series of artist graphite pencils that go from a 6H, which is a very gray hard lead, to an 8B, which is a very black soft lead. And I work with each one of these areas with the appropriate pencil. I'm also using a hog's hair brush as a blending brush in order to create a smooth finish 
and blend my transitions. I work my way down through each of the features of the face, repeating the process. I'm looking for shapes, values, and edges. I'm looking for the smaller shapes inside of the larger shapes and the individual values that each of them have, such as the dark patch that is around the nostril. Carefully blending my transitions and achieving those accurate values is what gives us a sense of form, and the form is the three-dimensionality of a particular shape. This is what makes the nose look round, the chin come out, the forehead look like it's rounded, each of the fingers. Form is really important in terms of being able to create an image that looks realistic and doesn't look photographic. I continue to finish the larger forms of the face, the chin, the cheek, and the forehead, looking for subtle shapes within shapes, and again, really paying attention to my values and the quality of my edges. You'll notice how I've systematically worked my way around the drawing to each of the features. And I've put quite a bit of detail in the face itself because this is what I want to be the focal point. You'll also notice an undulating line along the left side of the face on the profile near the eye, along the cheek, and down near the chin. You'll see that it's darker, lighter, darker, then lighter again. And what this does is create a visual interest. What we're looking for is actually a play of opposites. We need the lights and the darks, the range of values. We're also looking for a variety of lines. We're also looking for areas that are highly finished and also those that are left unfinished. This creates variety and a play of opposites and a kind of tension and balance in an image. Now that I have the focal point of the drawing done, I'm working towards the peripheral elements. I'm looking at the hands and I don't want to develop them fully. I want to edit out quite a bit of information and leave them suggestive. I also want the hands underdeveloped in order to counterbalance the highly rendered finish on the face. I use a very light pencil, a very delicate touch, and only bring up certain aspects of the fingers and leave the entire back of the hand completely undone and leaving it to just vignette off into nothing. As I move into the hair, I deal with it very much like the hands. I don't want it to be a focal point with a lot of detail. I'm editing out a lot of information, I'm letting the ends of it just vignette away, and I'm dealing with it like a larger mass with values that fluctuate and basically just fade off. I pull the highlights out with my eraser and then add a few detailed tendrils on the edges in order to give the character of her hair. Well, that's it. The drawing is now finished, and I hope you've enjoyed this demo. If you'd like to know more about this drawing method, you can check out my course, Drawing a Portrait from Your Own Photo, which has over eight and a half hours of detailed instruction. You can find the link to that course below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.